All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. A bit of a Matthew McConaughey start there for some reason. Uh, to the Stick of Tynamite podcast number 10. Another lovely Stick of Tynamite coming at you. So this is instead of what was the weekly ramble, I'm bringing back my old podcast. Did number 9 last week, new logo, nice and purple. As you know, I like purple. And this podcast, for those who don't know, who don't have the time and are only here to listen to one of the topics, just head down to the description, check the timestamps for your uh, viewing pleasure so that that way you can watch specifically the topic you're here to listen to. Or if you want and you're my best friend, you're going to sit down and listen for the next hour or so to the Stick of Time of My Podcast all the way through as I ramble on, talk to you about anything and everything pertaining to games, YouTube, movies, all that sort of shit that I like, including, of course, UFC that I love to talk about. The only thing you won't find on the Sticker Time My Podcast is Assassin's Creed discussion. Some of you will enjoy that, some of you will not. Uh, I have two Assassin's Creed podcasts, the Kill Connor Club, Kill Connor Clubhouse. If you want the Kill Connor Club, it's on my channel, it's on James's channel, you can listen to it. There's hundreds of hours of us talking about Assassin's Creed. If you're the type of person that wants even more of that content, just head over to patreon.com forward slash as always and donate $1 and become an as always member where you can get exclusive extra podcasts, the Kill Connor Clubhouse, plus early access to other cool content James and I do. It's fantastic. It's the best way to support me and this channel, including James. It's patreon.com forward slash as always. And if you just want to sit down right now with me, and listen to me ramble on for a little while, talk about some news going on. Sit back, relax, because we're gonna have some fun. What what's been going on, guys? It's been a it's been a good week. Uh, let's check what's going on, on the channel. So just had the Kill Connor Club this past Sunday. Good one. We had old, good old Ben Moderox on there. A lovely talking about Sanskrit Empire leak listings and all that nonsense. We talked about uh, Colin Moriarty, kind of funny leaving that. I talked about that last week on the Stick of Tynamite. I've got more to discuss with that, though, this week. We'll get into that later. And not much else has been going on. We finished the multiple battle. We talked about that again last week in the whole Tynamite victory celebration. It's been great. Uh, the only thing we know and can confirm is that my next opponent for the multiplayer battles within the community is Tynamite versus The Creed. That's happening. You guys voted, so that'll be a thing that'll go on and occur, which is in nice and exciting, and, uh, I know the stick of Tynamite to some is a bit niche, as someone described it in the comments last week. You know, unique. People are here for Assassin's Creed right on this channel, mostly. But this is not for that, this is for me to let loose, let live, and enjoy my life a bit more without talking about fucking Assassin's Creed sometimes. Because I don't always want to, I've got plenty of other stuff I want to talk about, and some of you feel the same way. You're like, Tyler, we love you, but I'm not even that into Assassin's Creed anymore. I'm like, I get you. Join me here, for the bands. We can talk about UFC, we can talk about other things, movies, whatnot. I wouldn't mind looking up, I might start with some movie conversations going on. Because I feel like, I saw Logan last week, as we talked about. And the only movies I've seen since then is ones through uni I watched. I'm doing, so I'm in my third year, so I'm doing my final, because my minor is cinema studies. I'm uh, doing my third year cinema studies classes, which is histories of film theory. So I watched Rome, Open City, which is an Italian film from 1945, just after uh, World War II. Uh, Solid movie. Uh, black, obviously black and white, there's sound, but it's all in Italian, so you're reading lots of subtitles, which is tough because Italians talk a lot, and their movies, uh, show off that culture, so they're certainly talking a lot, so it's a lot of reading subtitles, but it's an interesting story about, uh, Rome occupied by the Nazis, and the people trying to deal with that interesting movie. I love watching black and white movies and old movies, I don't mind reading subtitles, it's fine with me. I know it's quite a... That's I'm a film nerd, so people don't like that. But some of it's a bit ridiculous. But think about old movies like that uh, that, I've been, that I've been watching recently, especially through this class, is uh, which I find probably most interesting <clears throat> is the fact that they're very moral heavy. So like, there's not 
as much narrative satisfaction as with characters and payoff like we're used to today uh, with a lot of movies. It's mostly just like once they get the point and the moral of the story across, they'll just kill all their characters. <laughs> they don't really care or there won't be really an ending or a conclusion if all their characters in the story's been building up, you won't see it happen. You're just left to your imagination as long as you understand the moral of the story. You could probably watch Rome Open City on YouTube, I'd say. I think I googled it. So I think it's on YouTube, I'd say. It's so fucking old. Um, it's set the year before in 1944 during the occupation of the Nazis. Interesting film. Well acted. Solid movie. Um... I find that kid actors were a lot better back in the day than they are today. You don't find as many really good kid actors as you do in those black and white movies. But that's because everyone was pretty average back then, I guess. I don't know. What movies are out? Um, I'm going to Google my local cinema. See what movies are out. I still have no internet, but I'm at home this time and I'm hotspotting for my phone to do this podcast. So that that way I can uh, Google things and I'm not just trying to do things off the top of my head. I don't want to do that. When it comes to an hour long talk, I want to be able to Google things, show you stuff on the screen and all that good stuff. I'm just trying to figure out like what movies I can go see and talk about next week and maybe you guys can go see it so within the next week so we can talk about it. Beauty and the Beast is out. I mean, I'm straight and I'm, you know, in my 20s. Uh, so probably not going to go see Beauty and the Beast by myself. Even though I wouldn't be mad at seeing it, but it's not like it's going to change my life. You know, I kind of see it whenever. Not like I'm seeking it out. Kong, Skull Island, yeah, I'm all set on ridiculous movies. Life, that's the McConaughey, Ryan Reynolds movie. Might see that, that's not bad. I felt like there was more movies I wanted to see, but I think things like Lion and stuff aren't showing anymore at cinemas. Is Power Rangers out? Power Rangers are listed here. Yeah, Power Rangers are out, I guess. I didn't know that. Maybe it comes out tomorrow. Hmm. Or, oh, I'm recording this Wednesday, but this comes out Friday. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm all set on movies, eh? Life would be the only one, but I'm not that interested in that either, like, to pay to go see that. I don't know. Lego Batman? No. Yeah, I don't know. Not that fast. Because when it comes... Like, I love going to the movies, but when it comes to going to the movies, it's like, you're spending all that money. Do you really want to do it? I don't know. A Cure for Wellness. What's that? I don't know. That looks weird. Only two session times. Tomorrow? No, probably not. Um... That's weird, a cure for wellness. All I see is the picture of a naked lady in a tub covered in something. Uh, look, tell you what, you're appealing to me in some way, but, like, maybe not. There's something weird that's appealing there, but no, I'm all good on that. I am all set on those. Uh, those movies. What's coming out? Have we got coming soons here? I wouldn't mind talking about some upcoming movies. Yeah, here we go. I'll get the coming soon list up. Uh, The Fate of the Furious. So, the Fast and the Furious, the eighth movie. Uh, There's no chance of me seeing that movie. I fucking hate Fast and the Furious movies. Like, the first one, the really old one, but no, fuck fuck that movie. Fast 8, get the fuck out of my face. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Wow. Nothing really that good. Uh... Come on, guys. Surely there's something. Surely there's something good coming out. There's really not much. Oh, God. Have I... Seriously? Seriously. i got to wait till April 25th before a movie I want to see. So it's a month away. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But I didn't realize how soon that movie was. So holy shit. I'm so excited. That's only a month away. Wow. That's cool. April 25th in Australia. We usually get these Marvel movies early, so I'm pro- it's probably like the week after for the US and everywhere else. I don't know. Um, oh, that's amazing. Guardians will be the next big one. That's exciting, guys. How good's that? Marvel doesn't know how to do it. I've seen the trailers, but again, I'm kind of avoiding lots of details and trailers for things. I just want to kind of go in blind. I don't really know what this story is even about. As long as it's Guardians, 
and I'm excited. Very cool. What else do we have? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. There's not. There's a. I mean, there's a few interesting ones. They look cool, but I don't really know. John Wick Chapter Two isn't. Didn't that come out months ago? In America, that's not coming until May for us. Nah, I'm all good. And King Arthur: Legend of the Sword. I am excited for that because one of my favorite actors on the planet, beautiful Charlie Hunnam, isn't it? That man with the best hair in the show business. Uh, so he's playing King Arthur. That's 11th of May in Australia, 2017. I believe it's coming out way earlier again for the US. It's I thought it was coming out of March. Maybe it's uh, April for you guys. I don't know. I hate getting things late. It doesn't make sense to me. It just does not make sense. Snatched is coming out that same day, 11th of May. Amy Schumer, Goldie Horn. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. When your boyfriend... When her boyfriend dumps her, Emily, and spontaneous woman in her 30s, persuades her ultra-cautious mum to accompany her on a vacation to Ecuador, oh god, that sounds fucking terrible, and it's Amy Schumer, oh, please fuck off, then we've got Alien, things like that, whatever, Pirates of the Caribbean, 5, is a thing, in May, I didn't realise that was that soon, yeah. The Promise, set during the, the last days of the Ottoman Empire, The Promise follows a love triangle between Michael a brilliant medical student, the beautiful and sophisticated Anna and Chris, so that's starring Oscar Isaac, Christian Bale. Interesting. A few movies. Wonder Woman, of course, is coming out at some point. June 1st. The Mummy. Is that a reboot? I think it's a reboot. I don't think it's a sequel. 8th of June. We'll talk about those later, but, you know. There's movies this year for sure, but just a bit later. It's not picking up till end of April and into May for, for me. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Very exciting. Guardians of the Galaxy 1, top 5 favourite Marvel movies. For sure. That's fantastic. I'm excited. That'll be good. Um, why don't we get into some of the news that's been going on. I'll get the old Twitters up. Because we've had... I want to follow up from last week's topic when we talked about Colin Moriarty and he, him leaving kind of funny... So he'll be on Joe Rogan's podcast today. So this comes out Friday. He'll be on Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan Experience, my favorite podcast of all time. That's not my own podcast. Uh, probably a 10, 12 hours after this podcast comes out, I'd expect. I'm beyond excited to listen to that. Whew. So, what else has been going on with Colin? He announced his new brand, what he's going to be doing, which is, uh, which is called Colin's Last Stand. So, he's moving away from the video games industry, which is sad, but I very much uh, like to see him uh, talk about history and politics, two of my favorite things. Uh, I've been... Uh, very, very into politics recently, over the past couple of years, so very excited to see Colin do this. Uh, and he's just such an interesting guy, and like I said last episode, different perspective on things. But what I wanted to talk about was how successful this Patreon's been. So kind of funny where it came from, I believe their patronage is like in the 20,000s. On kind of funny, and then they have kind of funny games. That's its own one about the same amount, twenty thousand. Colin's Last Stand has been up for just over twenty four hours, and it has thirty six thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars in patronage already. Holy shit, that's crazy good. I'm patroning. I think I'm doing giving twenty five dollars a month to Colin's Last Stand because I love Colin. I love to see him do this. I want to support him and. You know, it's a symbol to standing up for freedom and free speech and our rights to say our, what we feel, to voice our opinions, to be ourselves. And that's what Colin stands for. And that's what he's fighting against. 
That's what happens, all the chaos with the social justice warrior snowflakes. Those people that wanted to shut down free speech and shut down a joke that was funny. And there's 5,555 patrons supporting Colin, standing up for Colin, donating. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Colin's last stand if you want to support free speech, support him in his conquest. And just head to his YouTube channel, Colin's Last Stand, as well. If you just want to watch his content and you don't want to, uh, and you don't want to uh, be giving money, that's fine. He doesn't care. But I'd recommend just join the team, ladies and gentlemen. Join the free speech bandwagon. Join freedom. It's a good thing, guys. And we can learn things learn things so that's fantastic go support Colin and go listen to him on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast hear a story and listen and if you haven't heard Joe Rogan before Jesus Christ you haven't lived best podcast in the world today where you can hear podcasts that go from the most interesting things you've ever heard to the funniest things you've ever heard because he has comedians scientists Political figures, personalities, journalists, everyone in between you can think of. He's had porn stars on there. It is a podcast that is just a guy by the name of Joe Rogan being so generous with his audience. With never restricting the types of people he has on the podcast. So that's fantastic. Go listen. I'm sure I'll be tweeting that out when that's up. What else is going on this week? Some stuff with UFC and boxing with Conor McGregor, but I'll talk about that with UFC talk. We've got... Um, i trying to think of today's date. 23rd. Well, it's the 25th this comes out. Um, what else has been going on since the last podcast? Not much on the Twitters. Not much on the Twitters, just lots of multiplayer battle stuff, lots of the Assassin's Creed Empire listing stuff. Colin, obviously, free speech battling. So that's great. What's the next? Ooh, okay. I'm just setting things up for later on in the podcast when we do the UFC talk, because I'm excited for that. I've got a weekly ramble topic for this week. I want to talk about, this is, we're going to get deep here. We're going to talk about loving yourself. And the reason this is a topic is I've had people, friends of mine, talking to me. They know who they are. They may or may not listen to this. Um, Talking to me, just looking for some advice, just on life, just having a hard time. And when that happens, because I have people fairly often through YouTube come and ask me for advice and talk to me with things I've done, especially since I've done this weekly ramble. And I love hearing it. It's a privilege to me to be able to uh, just give advice and just talk to you guys and you guys wanting to hear what I have to say Uh, and being entrusted with that sort of stuff. That's an honor and a privilege to me. So having, you know, someone just out there having a bit of a tough time in their personal life with some friends and, and life in general and that brought up with the advice I gave back something I thought may be pertinent to you guys out there. So I wanted to talk about it because I think that's important. And the thing is loving yourself. Because I feel, honestly, that's such a big thing in life when we go through anything, when we go through any struggles, when we go through any hard times. To me, the biggest solution is loving yourself and being okay with yourself. Is, the, is almost always the solution to a lot of different issues. Whether you're having trouble with what, knowing what you want to do in life, whether you're having trouble with your relationships in life. Self-esteem, self-belief, self-awareness, uh, self-admiration are all kind of the solutions and pillars to those problems. Because they're about you, right? 
why would you be unhappy if you love yourself or you wouldn't be? It doesn't matter what goes on in your life. Obviously, everyone has good and bad days. That's ridiculous to say otherwise. But to uh, to have it constantly is tough. And there's the best way to do it. And obviously, a lot of you listening are very young and you haven't gone through this and you haven't been able to find yourself. And if it comes to like, you know, saying oh, you know who you are, lots of people aren't able to answer that. If they're like, who are you? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Who is Tytler? Most people can't answer like who they are. That's And that's sad to me. It's tough, but most people can't. And it's a journey we all go on. I don't know myself very well. And obviously we change and we grow. And being in relationships, especially when I look back in high school and my friends that were in serious relationships ending high school and that they went out into the real world in those serious relationships, they end up breaking up because... Not all, but, you know, a lot of them, majority of them do, end up breaking up within the first year, two years, even if they were together all through high school, because you're an adult now, and you don't know who you are without that person, because you kind of went through a few years in your, you know, adolescence, where you should be discovering yourself being with someone else, and a lot of people end up separating because they're trying to figure out who they are, and they just change, and they're just different people, and that's natural, and that's okay, that's fine. But when I was in high school, from an early age, I was in a relationship with a girl, and I didn't like who I was. I was only, this is really early on, and it's an embarrassing topic to even talk about because of how young I was. I was like 13, 14 or whatever, and like, I just, you know, 13, 14 year olds don't know who they are. I mean, I certainly didn't. But when it ended, I was just so upset and I didn't like myself and, you know, I didn't like who I even was with that person anyway. I didn't like who I acted, but I've always been self-aware like this, even from really young age. It's so stupid looking back on a 13-year-old, 14-year-old talking like this because I was like, I didn't like who I was with her, but I was like, for God's sakes, you kissed her. That's all you did. What, like, it's not a real thing anyway. It's hardly a relationship. Um, I went to first base. Oh, my God. We held hands. That's pretty much gone all the way back then. Um, but afterwards, I was like in grade 9, so 14, 15 then, and I was just kind of like, I don't even know who I am. Such a weird thing to say, because no one else I knew was saying that sort of shit. Maybe I was ahead of the curve for, for that uh, perspective. But I asked myself the question, who am I? I spent, and I asked myself, who do I want to be, more importantly? Who do I want to be? Not just, like, who, what do I want to do when I grow up, but, like, who, who do I want to be? Who's the type of person when I look in the mirror, who do I want to be? And it's hard to construct that person, right? Because how do you know who do you want to be, right? There's a lot of elements to that. There is the one element being who do you want to be when you grow up kind of thing. What job do you want to do? What kind of work do you want to do? What hobbies do you like? What are your interests? What type of people do you want to be hanging around and then you can mold yourself off that. Who do you look up to in life? Whether it be someone you know, someone you see on your, on a sports team, someone you see on TV. And what things about them do you like and admire that you can take on board? So I kind of unknowingly did that just because I wanted to be someone else. Not that I didn't like myself, but I wasn't really happy with myself. I've always been self-confident, but I wasn't. Oh, but I was still self-conscious. It's hard to explain. It's complicated. But I spent all of high school, rather than chasing, you know, being in relationships and chasing girls the whole time and drinking, getting drunk, though, you know, to some level, I did, you know, you're, I'm a guy, you do all those things in some level, but, like, n- less so than I think a lot of my friends did. I spent a lot of high school following my hobbies and interests, Sort of setting myself up for after high school because I was always aware that well high school doesn't last forever people it just doesn't it ends and then I've got to do something after and a lot of my friends weren't prepared for that fact when it came around and I was I was ready to leave high school when I, I like I loved high school it was the best time of my life but well I mean I think right now it's the best time of my life but you know high school was an amazing time and I I was ready to go, though, when I left. I was super ready. I knew exactly what I was going to be doing. I knew where I was going to go. I knew what my plans were for the, you know, it's been almost four years. I 
have this plan up until right what I'm doing for the next four or five years of what I want to do. And I'm doing exactly what I plan to do. Exactly what I had planned to do, I'm doing. Which is, you know, that gives me a lot of self-confidence just every single day. Getting up knowing that I'd planned this, I prepared for this. I'm doing what I set out to do. I'm living my dream every day. I lived the dream I had when I was in high school. And now I'm dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger every single day going forward. And I'm sure I will get there too. Um, so through high school, right, I had to ask myself who I wanted to be, who, who, who as a person do I want to be? And I look to, you know, my parents, you know, I look up to my dad a lot as a man. Obviously most guys, you look to your father or your grandfather for, um, a male role model. There's others I had, I looked on, you know, I want to be a film director. So I looked to guys like Peter Jackson who, you know, directed Lord of the Rings, so I watched behind the scenes stuff, I used to follow him and what he was doing, The Hobbit was being made at that point, so, you know, when it came to professionalism, I looked to him as an inspiration to just keep me on track of what I want to do, I looked to great people in life, people in the sporting world, my favourite sports team, there's a player called Billy Slater on Melbourne Storm, as a human being, he's such a good dude, I loved and admired watching my favorite sports team ha- having an ambassador like him and the captain Cameron Smith to look up to um, and how they acted in, in, in the peak of the spotlight and act professional and like true sportsmen and men. I look to other people and just what kind of person I want to be. I look at my friends and who I liked being around and you build off that um, and you build yourself and an identity off of that, and I just knew what I wanted to do, I set myself goals after, and when you have goals set, and you have an idea of the people you admire, be, try to be like the people you admire, or the, try to be, try to take the qualities away that you like from the people you admire, and take them on, set yourself goals, set yourself plans for what you want to do next, and work every single day of your life towards that, guy or that girl that you want to be that's what I did my dream is to no longer have heroes no longer to have inspirations it's to be able to look in the mirror and be my own hero I don't think that's possible but like that's like the goal the ultimate goal right like because every there's always no one's ever perfect because that's like saying I'll one day I'll be perfect there'll always be something in someone that I'll admire and I'll look up to so I don't think that's possible but that's like it's the irony of the goal, but if you keep trying that, like you can be perfect or you can get better or be the best person you can be, it just keeps you working and never being stagnant, never being, uh, never being, uh, complacent's the word, never being complacent, so that's what I want to do, so when it comes to that, when I did all those things, I just found that I loved myself more, because you can be proud of yourself, right? Like, you can be proud of who you are and what you do when you set yourself goals and you have things you would enjoy doing. I had YouTube, I had filmmaking, I had hanging out with my friends, uh, doing certain things like that. Like, there's plenty of things I love to do. And when you have those goals and you do those things and you set yourself free time aside to relax and chill out and do the things you enjoy as a hobby and you work towards it, whenever you accomplish anything, it gets that much better. And the biggest advice I can give anyone is when you set yourself goals and you don't achieve them, or you make an excuse like, oh, I almost got there, didn't quite get there, and, and you give up. You Your mindset then becomes, you get used to giving up, you get used to quitting, you get used to saying that's too hard. That becomes a habit. I know it's like, oh, no, the next goal I'll get, I just couldn't get this one. No, no. When you give up, that becomes a habit. It just does. And I'll tell you why I know this, because I have made a habit of not giving up on my goals and actually achieving things. It's now a habit that I can't, it's, it gets easier to achieve goals when you keep doing them and not giving up on them. Sure, I get no's, I get fa- what you'd call failures, but I don't give up and I, in the end, I get what I want. You know, there's been those down moments where you doubt yourself all the time, that's just natural, but if you're in the habit of never quitting, it gets easier to not quit never giving up, whether it's a goal you set yourself at the gym, I want to be able to lose this much weight, I want to be able to run this far in this much time, you know, when you set yourself challenges physically, mentally, emotionally, personally, and you achieve them, you get into the habit of achieving goals, and your whole life over years and years and years just gets better and better and better, it's not a slow process, this is years, 
and I've got so much to learn still, but I, I, I know just seeing how I am around my friends, seeing what my friends do, that I know I'm one of the few people that was prepared for this, leaving, you know, childhood behind and, and prepared. I worked all of high school. I had a job the entire, you know, the four or five years I was at high school, had a part-time job, and I've worked every, you know, all my time since leaving high school. And working helps build confidence, work ethic, and an attitude uh, towards work. So, in a positive way, I should say. So, it's just about preparing yourself. Knowing that it doesn't matter how young you are. It's never too early to get ready for life. And to be the person you want to be. It's never too early. And it's never too late either. So, why not today? Guys, why not today? If you're down, why not today? Set yourself the goals you've been thinking about doing. You're like, I want to do that one day. Why not today? You start working towards that. Because why is it you having trouble with a friend? Or why are you having trouble with this relationship? Why are you having trouble with this job? Why are you having trouble with your family life? A lot of it can be answered with just looking in the mirror and being okay with you. When I moved to Melbourne, I was alone. I didn't have friends here. I moved. I left and gave up my entire life, all of my friends, my entire family, for this dream. And I don't regret it a single day, as sad as it makes me. I gave up my life. You have a, you know, you, you wake up in the morning, you live your life, you're used to a house, you're used to a place you are, you're used to the friends being around, even though you don't see them all the time, like you're used to them being there, right? I gave it up, the life I was used to for my whole childhood, because I knew what I wanted and was prepared for, and I don't regret it. And sure, when I moved, I didn't know anyone, I didn't have friends, but I was okay with me, and I knew what I was doing was for me, and I could look in the mirror and be proud that I'm trying I'm out there working my ass off, trying to achieve something. And it gave me that self-confidence, it gave me that self-belief, just knowing that I was trying to do something. And because I had that self-confidence, when I meet people, you just attract people. The people want to be around that. And I, want, and I go to people that, who have that same mentality because I want to be around that. So naturally, you just build friends, and it takes time. It was a slower process than even I expected to making friends move in. But now I've got so many great friends here, and I love it here. And as much as I love going back and visiting my family and friends, you know, I don't need to. I'm, I'm good here. I, I don't get homesick or anything. Not that I ever really did. It was more just the unfamiliar getting used to that, right? But it's about being okay with yourself, and to do that, it's about, you know... In, from my perspective, from my experiences, it's setting yourself goals, going out and doing them, being proud of you. And it's not wrong to say you're proud of yourself. There's a helicopter going over. You can probably hear that. Sorry about that. But there's nothing wrong with saying, look in the mirror and be like, you're awesome. Good on you, man. You're doing, you set yourself something, you're doing it. Dude, you're awesome. You've do, done this. You got. You went to the gym and you did this. The little goals. You want to go to the gym today? Oh, fuck, I can't be bothered. Go to the gym. Do it. You went there, that's a victory. Awesome. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you, Tyler. I can look in the mirror and say that. I really wanted to submit this um, drawing, let's say. I don't draw, but like for an example, if you're at someone into drawing. Oh, there's this contest for this thing. I submit, but I just didn't do it. Just do it. You submitted it. You gave it a shot. Good on you, man. Proud of you. You're doing something. You're trying. Starting a YouTube channel is a great thing for some people. I'm really interested in this. I want to do a YouTube channel. Go do it. Nothing's stopping you. Nothing's stopping you but you. So when you have trouble in those relationships and in your life, the first person you need to look to is the person in the mirror. And are you the person you want to be? Are you even trying to be the person you want to be? And as long as you're trying to be that person each and every day, you can at least be happy with you, be comfortable with you. And eventually everything else is just going to fall into place. It, it just does. You don't even, you barely need to try the other stuff. The other stuff just comes with you trying to be you. It's a natural occurrence to make friends. It's a natural occurrence to be successful with work and jobs and everything you do. From my experience, that's how I feel about it all. So that's me rambling 
about that. That was a long one. I hope you enjoyed that ramble. It's important, I think, and it gives you a bit more an insight into me and tell me my and telling my story. A lot of you already know a lot of it. There's a bit other perspectives of it, and other details of it. I love doing it. And onto that, you can look at just something like, as always, entertainment. You know, the company I have with James, that has the Tynamite banner under it, the Lasers banner under it, the Kill Connor Club banner, Kill Connor Clubhouse banner under it. You know, that's a dream I've had to run my own business. You know, Tynamite was that for a long time, then Kill Connor Club, and it's like, well, what 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 does that mean? What is Lasers? What is Tynamite? What is Kill Connor Club? They're separate things that have a conjoining. What what if they're all under one umbrella? That's as always entertainment. My dream is to own and run my own business. And sure, I do that on a, you know, small level on YouTube, but I want to, you know, it to be my life. And maybe as always isn't that thing. Maybe it will be one day. I hope it is one day. But, you know, it's almost like a test for me on a small scale to practice how to run a business, how to do what I want to do in the entertainment world with films, with videos, with um, journalism, with podcasting, with things like that, and with entertaining overall. It's a test and as always has a bright future ahead of it I feel like we've only just started this year it was a dream uh, about this time last year I came to James and I said look I think you know this year we launched on iTunes and we made this you know our podcast our collaboration is a thing our collaboration is <clears throat> a business almost it's what we do it's our job and then I came saying look what if you know, our brand, it's tough for a brand to be called Kill Connor Club. You know, it's a very niche title that fits in for an Assassin's Creed podcast. Well, we, we want to do so much more than that. It's got to be something else. And how can we get it to the people? How can we make money? How can we give people more? How can we make it a real business? And, you know, Patreon was the thing. And as always, and making exclusive content, early access content, um, and setting goals. You know, the Kill Connor Clubhouse isn't the only thing we're going to be doing with As Always. Obviously, the multiplayer battle, that was because of As Always. Being able to do that, power that, because of uh, you guys out there that are patrons. And if you even if you're not a patron, just supporting us. And there's going to be monthly Let's Plays on there from James and I that'll come to YouTube as well, but it'll be on Patreon first before anyone else. Um, once a month doing like a video, playing a video game. We're, James and I have more ideas and series in mind. I'm sure next year when we relaunch the podcast and we do the 2018 relaunch, there's going to be some bigger things than even this year was. That's from what if everything happens the way I want them to happen, next year is going to be even bigger announcements than this year. And, you know, get to the dream goals we want. That's, uh, it's exciting. We've got some ideas for some more series we, James and I can collaborate with. And eventually, maybe this channel will move into all, as always, stuff. Into all this, you know, under that banner. Rather than doing the things I'm doing now, which is kind of just whatever I want to do. Some Assassin's Creed videos, this podcast, things like that. But kind of put it all under that, as always, umbrella. Uh, I'm not sure how that'll happen, but I expect that'll happen one day. That's what I hope. That's my plan. In the long term, we'll see. Um... And we'll find a way to do that, but you just, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see how it goes. All right. That was a, whew, that was a ramble and a half. I am buggered. Let's, let's talk about UFC. Let's get into UFC. Let's get into fucking some fun stuff. Jesus Christ. Right, I'm going to pull up, so, the next card is UFC 210, April 9th, is that two weeks away? Fuck, two weeks away, I'm not going to preview that card yet, because, you know, I'll preview that the week of the fight, but there's some good fights on there, looking at it, um... Obviously, the main event, Daniel Cormier, Anthony Rumble Johnson. Great fight. I loved the first one. Looking forward to the next one. The the co-main, probably probably the the one I'm most excited on the card, is Chris Weidman, Gegard Mousasi fighting. 
Uh, but let's get into some more MMA news before, uh, rather than uh, this event. This event is the next one UFC is doing. And we'll talk about that in two weeks' time on episode 12 of the Stick of Time podcast. Past week, we had London. UFC in London, the main event. Corey Anderson versus Jimmy Manawa. I predicted Jimmy Manawa winning, and he did, but it was a first-round walk-away KO. Not what I anticipated. I think my prediction was, like, in the middle of the fight. It's a five-round fight, like the third-ish round of the fight. Uh, there would be the finish, because I just thought Jimmy Manuel was just far too fast, far too athletic for Corey, and he'd catch him eventually. He caught him all right that first round. That was a brutal KO. And I had some people, t- I was talking to some people about it, and they said, finally, the light heavyweight division's heating up, right? And I'm like, well, I mean, I guess, but what are you going to do with Jimmy Manuel? Because if... He, his last loss was Rumble Johnson, who fucking destroyed him. Slept him back at UFC 191. Uh, and how do you argue that Jimmy Mann was a contender for the title if Daniel Cormier beats Rumble Johnson in two weeks' time? So what are you saying, that Jimmy Mann gets a title shot next against DC when DC beat Rumble and Rumble destroyed Jimmy? It just doesn't make sense. It's just tough. Because it just feels like those top contenders in that division are so much better and so far ahead of the curve compared to the rest of the division, like uh, Shogun and Anderson and even Manoa, who's very fast, very talented, very athletic. But can he beat Rumble? No, we've seen it. Can he beat DC? I don't think so. Can he beat Alexander Gustafsson? Maybe. Probably not. Can he beat John Jones? Uh, get the fuck out of my face. He's not beating John Jones. You know, those top four guys in that division, I don't see anyone else other than those top four beating each other. I don't see anyone below them beating them. I just don't see it. You know, I don't know. The co-main, Gunnar Nelson, Alan Joban, and I predicted Gunnar Nelson submitting him in the end of the second or early third. I felt he would wear him out. It's exactly what he did on on uh, in the first round. He wore him out in that first round with top position using his ground game and jiu-jitsu, and in that second round, early in the second round, though, very fast, quicker than I expected, again, got Nelson rocked him with a right, hit him with a head kick, and then finished with a guillotine in the middle of that second round, so Gunnar Nelson submits Alan Joban. What's next for Gunnar Nelson is the question. Uh, I don't know. That Most of those guys in that welterweight division are booked, I know John Cavanaugh, his coach, and Conor McGregor's coach as well, uh, called for him fighting Wonder Boy Stephen Thompson. I don't know that's a good idea. I think Stephen Thompson fuck up Nelson. I mean, I'd love to see the fight. I'd love to see Nelson tested. He was tested against Maya. It didn't work out well for him, but, you know, there's, Maya's probably the next worldwide champion, so it's no shame in losing and getting better. We'll see what happens. But hopefully Gunna gets a big fight, like a top 10 guy. He deserves it. Uh, what else? Oh, Brad Pickett was on that card. He lost his last fight in his home uh, country, hometown. Last fight of his career. Winning the fight those first two rounds, I had him up. 20-18. to 18. Uh, But he got head kicked and knocked out uh, by Nova. I believe the guy's name is. I my int- The hotspot on the internet here is dying, so I can't check it out. It's a guy I hadn't heard of. Um, so I was a bit sad. But, you know, he's out, and this young kid got a big win. And that kid's daughter, um, Nova... I want to get his name up. I want to get his name up somewhere. Because... Great dude. Uh... Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Cheeto Vera is the guy that beat... Uh, that beat Brad Pickett. And his daughter has a neurological... Uh, disease. She can't smile, apparently. So... 
pretty so he fights he says to raise money for her surgery was like 80 grand so that's an interesting story but like brian stan analyst for the ufc is going to hold an event in july for him to raise money for his daughter hopefully raise 50 grand so that's fantastic news brian stan what an what an absolute legend what a hero what a nice guy so that's good um And, um, what a story for that kid. Hopefully they push that forward for his next fight. If he fights in, fights in July or something like that, you know, you want to push those stories forward. That's a really, you know, touching story for, for that kid. What else is going on? Uh, I'm on my Facebook right now and someone's added me to some meme page. Not by choice, they just automatically added me and now I'm getting notifications from this fucking page. Leave group, fuck off. Turn off notifications. Leave group, thank you. Please don't add me, that's stupid. I hate getting added to Facebook groups. It's so annoying. What else been going on in news of MMA, not just UFC? Bellator just announced their pay-per-view in June, I believe, at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The main event, I believe, is Chael Sonnen fighting Vanderlei Silva, the fight that never happened because they both got done for PEDs. Well, Chael did, Vanderlei ran away, and that was in the UFC, now it's at Bellator. The co-main is Fedor Emelianenko and Matt Mintrion. That was rebooked. They were supposed to fight in February. Um, so that'll be an interesting card. No titles. And it's a pay-per-view. I mean, it's a lot of big names. They're trying to make their money. We'll see how that goes. I believe that's their first Madison Square Garden event for Bellator. So that is what it is. Hmm. Is that why my phone disconnection? Is that why the internet's been fucked? Hmm. I think the cable's a bit messed up. That's why I've been able to get on the internet. Mayweather McGregor's getting closer. Connor was walking out. Uh, Connor McGregor was walking out uh, on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Con Conlon, someone or other, someone make an Irish boxer making their pro debut at Madison Square Garden again in New York City. So Connor went there, walked him out in a nice green suit and Gucci jacket, as he loves to point out. Stood inside a professional boxing ring for the first time, I believe. So that was interesting. And he was running off screaming at the boxing media after that he is boxing. The fight will happen. It's getting closer. He'll let us know. And that he's going to shock the world. I mean, Jesus Christ, I fucking hope so. I don't. See how that's going to happen? A guy who's never professionally boxed ever in history of his life. Fighting arguably the greatest boxer ever. Sure, Connor's got the reach. Connor's got the athleticism. Connor's got the size. Connor's got the youth. He's only 28. Mayweather's 41 by the time this fight happens. Coming out of retirement for it, so... I don't know. I don't... I, I believe the fight will happen. I don't see how Conor wins. But you know what? I love Conor McGregor and I don't like Floyd Mayweather. Obviously, I like Mayweather as a fighter. I respect him as a fighter. You know, he's one of the greatest of all time. But, you know, when you're someone that beats women, guess what? Can't be friends with you. Not going to like you. So, I would love nothing more than to see Conor McGregor beat the shit out of Floyd Mayweather. Why wouldn't I want to see that? So... That's the dream. We'll see if it happens. I, I expect the fight will happen. Hopefully the fight happens. But I don't see how Connor wins that fight. But it'll, it'll make Connor money for his coming child, for his family in the future. Good for you, Connor. Go make the money. Good for you. I love it. I love it. Uh, 
I don't know what other MMA news is really going on. We've got some good cards in April gone. Obviously, we've got the UFC 210, Daniel Cormier, and uh, Rumble. The Kansas City one is the one that I'm probably most excited about the whole month. It's uh, Demetrius Johnson defending his flyweight title, but the co-main event has got Australia's number one fighter, Robert Whittaker, number six ranked middleweight in the world, fighting uh, Jokere Souza, the number three ranked middleweight in the world, that if Robert Whittaker beats Jokere, holy shit, you, you're screaming title shot. You are screaming title shot. Can he be, I believe Robert Whittaker will be the first ever Australian UFC world champion. I believe it. So, I'm rooting for him in that fight. You've also got Michelle Watterson fighting Rose Nama Yunus on that card. It's a great, great fucking card. Crazy great. So, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um... I don't know what other MMA news there really is, to be honest. Not, not much. No big fight announcements. They oh, they announced UFC Auckland card in um, June. They come to Auckland, New Zealand. I'm thinking about getting work off and flying over to NZ for that. Maybe we'll see what happens. I'm considering it. Main event is Derek Lewis, the Black Beast, fighting New Zealand's own Mark the Super Samoan Hunt. Gotta love Mark Hunt. Uh, who just came off a brutal KO loss to Alistair Overeem. Derek Lewis on an absolute tear, five fight win streak. I'm obviously rooting for Mark Hunt, but it's hard to doubt Derek Lewis uh, gets a big win. We'll see. Um... What else? Oh, yeah, the co-main looks like it's going to be Derek Brunson against Dan Kelly, Australia's Daniel Kelly, Melbourne's own Daniel Kelly, who just beat, in the biggest one of his career back at UFC 209, he beat Rashad Evans. Imagine him beating a top 10 middleweight. That's fucking insane. That's insanity going on, ladies and gentlemen. So that'll be nice. I'll consider going to that. Uh, I think that's most of the news. Oh, God, no, I've got to talk about this. Oh, God, i got to talk about this. One last MM, bit of MMA news. Wow. This is what I can't believe. Ready for this? Vitor the Phenom Belfort, former UFC light heavyweight champion. He's been in the UFC for 20 years. He debuted at 19. He's 39. This is 20 years in the UFC. I think it's the longest ever run in the UFC in history of that company. He's fought in multiple divisions. Three divisions. Heavyweight, light heavyweight, middleweight. I believe heavyweight he has at least once. Uh, one of the... An absolute legend. Future Hall of Fame. One of the greatest ever. Has lost the last three fights... He lost to Jacques Array. He lost to Gegard Mousasi. And he just lost to Kelvin Gastelum. He beat Dan Henderson in the fight before, but he, then he lost in the first round to Chris Weidman for the middleweight title before then. So he's won one of the last five fights. He's on his way out. He can't take the steroids anymore because of USADA's come in and stopped all that in the UFC. So... Vitor, for his final fight of his career, after 20 years in the UFC, he's like, okay, one more fight in Rio de Janeiro at UFC 212. He wants to fight in his home country of Brazil. He's calling out CM Punk, for God's sake. CM Punk, former WWE superstar, former WWE champion, longest reigning WWE champion in modern history. Uh, my number one favorite pro wrestler of all time, CM Punk. I love CM Punk. A uh, guy who's fought in the UFC once against Mickey Gall and lost very decisively, very quickly in the first round. A guy who shouldn't be in the UFC. As much as I love CM Punk, you know, he, other than money, you know, there's no reason to have him in the UFC. Not as a professional. He's not a professional athlete. Or he kind of is. I don't even know. 
you know, you shouldn't be fighting those top tier guys, but the fact that Vitor Belfort's calling him out, you know what, CM Punk, I mean, you've been training the last two, three years now, man. I mean, why not fight Vitor Belfort? Because Vitor's old as fuck, his chin's weak as dick. I mean, if you fight Vitor, you lose. It's like, well, we all thought you'd lose CM Punk. You fight Vitor and you win. Jesus Christ. You could get a punch in there. You could get a... a you know, you're not... You, you, you've been training for two and a half years with Duke Rufus at Rufus Sports in Milwaukee. You're obviously very skilled and talented. And you're obviously a hard worker. We've seen what CM Punk does with his work ethic. He obviously tries and cares. Fight Vitor Belfort. You've got a chance, man. Like, you got to punch his chance. And, like, this is... If you want to fight a big name like Vitor... Oh, my God. Can you imagine? I mean, fucking book it. I think it's crazy for Vitor to call him out because I just think it's stupid, Vitor. There's plenty of other people you could fight. And I'm just sad that you're going to go to a guy that's never won a professional mixed martial arts, arts fight. For your final fight, what that really means nothing. It just means you really want a desperate to get a win in your last fight. There's plenty of other people you can fight to get a win. You don't suck that hard, Vitor. You're a former UFC champion of the world. And you don't want to lose CM Punk. That would be embarrassing. I don't think he would. I think Vitor would fuck him up. But, like, there's a chance. One of CM Punk's best chances to win a fight in the UFC. Fuck it. I say why not. Just because, lol, I love chaos. Uh, but I don't think it's the best idea. Uh... From a purist standpoint, it's not a good idea, but from a chaotic standpoint, because I love chaos, fuck it, why not? Um, why not? Okay. That's it for most of my MMA and UFC stuff, I think. That's it. I don't think there's any more... MMA UFC news to discuss. I don't think there's anything more I need to talk about, really. We've got this Sunday uh, on patreon.com slash as always, Kill Connor Clubhouse. And it's going to be because we've reached and surpassed our $100 a month goal for Patreon. We're going to be doing this episode a video podcast. So it's going to be filmed. You're going to see our faces on the podcast. So that'll be awesome. So go down at $1. And you can watch the first ever Kill Connor Clubhouse video podcast for special, beautiful news. Um, I think that's about it, of course. If you enjoyed this, like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, which I doubt you know if you're here at the sick of time of my podcast. But... You know? Uh, this is a... This is a fun time I have. I enjoy doing this. This is a blast. So I hope you enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed it. Of course. Like it. Comment. Let me know what you think of the different topics. Time stamps, as I've said. You've already dealt with that. We're at the end now. So there's no point in that. Um, again, to support me and support this channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash as always, and you can donate there, become an as always member, and of course, just subscribing to this channel helps bring me joy and, um, eternal love from me to you. Uh, next week, I'm not sure what we'll be talking about, we'll find that out next week, enjoy that, there's, uh, I've got an Assassin's Creed video coming out tomorrow, so on Saturday, and then that's about it for now, for the moment. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, you beautiful, sweet vintage lads. And I will see you very soon for more amazing content from me because I'm fucking awesome. Positivity for the self. Love it. Bye, guys. You're the best.